We begin with the latest on the pandemic. Right now, every state in the U.S. except Vermont is reporting either high or substantial transmission of COVID-19. This is the Delta variant is infecting kids at an increasing rate. Florida currently has the highest number of young children hospitalized with the virus. Victor Kendo's in Hollywood, Florida with the latest. This morning, doctors are making an unprecedented push to get children vaccinated against COVID-19 as new pediatric COVID cases near 94,000 in just the last week and children are hospitalized at a rate nearly four times higher than just a month ago. The head of the American Academy of Pediatrics is now urging the FDA to authorize vaccines for 5 to 11 year olds as quickly as possible. We need to be approaching um, uh, the trials and the authorization of the COVID vaccine for children with the same urgency that we did with adults. Um, just as it's a serious disease in adults, it can be a very serious disease in children. But Pfizer has not yet applied for emergency use authorization for 5 to 11 year olds. That's expected to happen at the end of September. The company hoping to start giving out shots by the end of 2021, if not sooner. In Texas, where hospitals have started setting up outdoor overflow COVID tents once again, seven-year-old Enzo Montoya, a second grader, was hospitalized with the virus for more than two weeks. He had to be isolated for 10 days. Just one of his parents allowed to stay with him. They thought they'd taken the right precautions by getting vaccinated, but Enzo was somehow exposed. They are lucky that we were able to bring Enzo home, and it's very sad right now with COVID rising and kids. So we just want everyone to do their part, get vaccinated, not for themselves, but for the people who cannot get vaccinated. You know, the little kids um, are at risk right now. As children return to school during the COVID surge, a battle raging over masks. Two of the largest school districts in Texas now define Governor Greg Abbott's order requiring them on school property regardless of vaccination status. And in Florida, where they currently have the highest number of children hospitalized with COVID-19, two districts refusing to follow Governor DeSantis' ban on mask mandates, saying no one will be allowed to go without them. The goal is to keep our children out of the hospital. And why would you not err on the side of caution? DeSantis threatening to withhold pay from superintendents or school board members who go against his ban on mask mandates. That announcement from Florida's governor comes as many of the state school districts go back to the classroom today and tomorrow. And while they go back and forth over masks, Florida just requested an additional 300 ventilators. Diane. All right, Victor Kendo in Hollywood, Florida. Thank you. And let's bring in physician at Stanford Children's Health, Dr. Lok Patel. For more on this, Dr. Patel, thanks for being here. You know, the CDC recently asked Pfizer and Moderna to increase, I think, double the number of kids in their clinical trials. But now the American Academy of Pediatrics is urging the FDA to authorize vaccines for kids five and up based on the data from the original cohort. What's your take on that? My take is that we have a different sense of urgency right now. Now, the original kind of expansion of that clinical trial, Diane, was, was mostly to look for those very rare side effects, which some experts even doubted that those were really going to catch, because some of these side effects that people are worried about are one in a million. There's not that many children enrolled in this trial. So there was even a, a question whether or not this needed to happen. It looked like it was mostly to just have people be at ease. But in reality, we have enough data, not only in this group, but also in older children, to know that this vaccine is absolutely safe and works. The one lingering question is going to be the dose. But regardless, I see both sides of this. Absolutely. I see an, an understanding. I sat with the AAP that we need to be approaching this vaccine with the same level of urgency as older and more vulnerable and more exposed Americans. But also the FDA is saying we're not going to cut any corners because we need to make sure people trust the shot and they go out and get it for their young kids. Well, and so that's the thing, right? I, I, I spoke to the AAP president yesterday, but the reason the FDA asked for those increase in the size of trials was to be extra sure about side effects like myocarditis, for example. So what do you say to parents who are concerned about that, particularly when you're talking about young kids? What I say, Diane, to any parent out there or anyone who has questions about these rare side effects is that we have completely lost our perception of risk because people are so focused right now on these theoretical rare reactions to the vaccines that might be occurring in 10 to 20 cases out of 100,000 or more, when we're completely forgetting about the very real and scary side effects, I should say, of the actual virus. The myocarditis is self-limiting. We know that it's a rare occurrence. We have our eyes on it. These kids are doing great. But we know that hospitalizations are rapidly rising everywhere where children are unvaccinated under the age of 12 in large numbers. The Delta variant is like a homing missile looking for our young kids. And hospital, hospitals in Louisiana, Texas, Arkansas, Florida are basically sending out a crying call 
And that's what we should be focused on. So what kind of a difference do you think vaccinating this age group would make, not only in keeping kids out of the hospital, but in the larger picture of fighting this virus? Well, you kind of alluded to what I was going to say with the second part there in the larger picture, because yes, we want to keep kids themselves absolutely protected. But remember, there's also two other things that people aren't focusing on when they just talk about kids being hospitalized or dying, which is grave enough, is number two, kids can still spread and propagate this virus and give it a chance to mutate and make more virulent strains and also spread it over to more vulnerable people, such as other adults with underlying medical conditions or children with underlying medical conditions. But also, Diane, we're really worried about the theoretical risk of long hauler COVID in children. Myself and anyone out there who has treated children in the outpatient setting, in the emergency department or in the ICU has seen, unfortunately, plenty of kids presenting with long hauler symptoms, even after having an asymptomatic infection several months ago. And that is horrifying. Now, in Texas and Florida, we're seeing schools pushing back against the governor's ban on mask mandates and requiring them on school property anyway. So what does the data say right now about masking at this point, particularly for young children? The data says what the data has been saying for over a year and said that masks work. Now, the most important thing that I hear when parents throw a rebuttal to me is that masks are not safe for kids. They are absolutely safe. Your kids, your child's oxygenation level is gonna to be totally fine with a mask. We just need to make sure that children are able to safely wear a mask. And certain children with underlying medical conditions or sensory issues are accommodated for because they may not be able to keep a mask on without messing with it all day long. But by and large, especially in places where kids cannot be vaccinated, masks represent a very important layer of mitigation in keeping those schools open in person, which is we know it's the most safe thing is to keep them in those in that in-person learning environment without getting them exposed. And Diane, I thought Governor DeSantis and Governor Abbott were both pro-life. And this move does not seem to be supporting that notion when it comes to putting kids at risk. All right, Dr. Lok Patel, always great to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.